Hey, and welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Podcast. My name is Darren, of course, and today I have a really special guest, Dr. Elizabeth Latham. She is the owner of the Black Garlic Company, and we're going to talk about everything black garlic. I'll be right back. Smoking, grilling, getting hot and hotter, sous vide and chilling from fire and water. Hey all, it's Darren. I want to talk to you about Fire and Water Cooking Edible Creations. We've got a new product line that we're launching here on our website at fireandwatercooking.com. And you can check out our all new rub blends. And we make these from scratch, including our very own blueberry and black garlic seasoning. We're also selling the Black Garlic Company's black garlic powder and uh, also their cloves and garlic salt. Also, we have some freeze-dried fruit all different kinds, all fresh picked and then freeze dried. And also we're doing freeze dried candy, uh, gummy nerds, Skittles, the sour Skittles, all kinds of freeze dried candy. If you haven't had freeze dried candy, you're missing out. It's very unique and special. We're also doing freeze dried ice cream, ice cream sandwiches, and mochi ice cream. So if you haven't had any freeze dried ice cream, go ahead and check it out. Fireandwatercooking.com and check out the store. Welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Podcast. I'm Darren. I'm your host, of course. Today, I have a real special guest, Dr. Elizabeth Latham. She is the owner of the Black Garlic Company, and uh, I've been wanting to get somebody on here to talk about black garlic for a long time, and I stumbled onto her uh, company here a few weeks back and I've done some research about her. And she seems like one of the best ones to get on here because actually she's a doctor <laughs> and she has her own black garlic company and she started it from scratch. So welcome, Dr. Latham, and uh, welcome to the podcast. Introduce Thank yourself. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Well, uh, I really like having you on. I really want to get into this because I've been using black garlic now for the last few years and yeah. it's still not really that popular. And I think people don't really understand what it is. So I wanted to have you on so you can kind of explain, let's just go back to, to how you started into it, but let's go back further and just uh, who you are, what you do, and then how you got started. Yeah. Um, I like to say I have one of the most confusing um, resumes in the world. I <laughs> actually, my background is originally in marine biology. I am from San Diego. And then I became a uh, instructor at New York University in Abu Dhabi. And it was there that I decided I didn't wanna be a marine biologist anymore. So I moved to Texas to get my PhD in animal science, specializing in microbiology because I was always interested in the food system and where our food came from. Cause growing up in Southern California, I hate to say it, you know, I was just like a grocery store kid, basically. I had never visited a farm or a ranch or anything like that. And then during my time when I was doing my, my PhD here at Texas A&M, I saw this random episode of a TV show called Bob's Burgers. It's like a cartoon on Fox. And the main character was making a hamburger and he called it Bet It All on Black Garlic Burger. And it was made with a black garlic smear on it. I was like, excuse me, uh, what is this? What is black garlic? And so I ordered it from California um, and instantly fell in love. Um, the problem was is that I was eating probably close to about $10 of black garlic every three days. So I put my scientist hat on and started doing research. Um, and admittedly, the first year that I was making black garlic, I was using used lab equipment. Um, so that was fun and a little sketchy. <laughs> But then after a year, I basically found a process that made basically what I think is like the best darn black garlic that I've ever had. Um, and now I think black garlic, you know, it was just one of those things that was a side hustle. And then now it's like all, all consuming in my life. Um, and yeah, I think we're in close to maybe a hundred stores all over the country, like independent grocery stores um, and online. And we're doing close to a hundred pounds of garlic um, a week, basically. Wow. That's awesome. So going back to your, your education. So you obviously, you started out thinking you wanted to be a professor. You wanted to be a teacher because you got your PhD, uh, which is a lot of work, very hard to do. And uh, not a lot of people can go through the, 
you know, that process to get their doctorate in anything. So how did, like I said, how did it turn to, I want to be a professor to now I want to run a, a black garlic company. Cause that's totally different. And I, I like talking about this stuff with people because I've talked to, you know, very famous chefs like uh, Kenji Lopez alt who started out going to school for architecture and worked part-time in restaurants when he was going to school and decided he wanted to be a chef, you know? So yeah. Yeah. I know a lot of people like that, that they started out doing one thing or being an engineer, like Chris Young, who owned, who was part of chef steps and they turned totally turned their life around and, and did something else. So what was going yeah. through, through your mind when you decided, Hey, uh, you know, I got my doctorate in these sciences. Yeah, I do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I like to say, and the way I kind of think about it is that my, my cave woman brain took over and I'll, I'll explain that. So when I was doing science and research and teaching at the university level, it was all cerebral. I was just like sitting on my butt all day long. I was just like gnashing my teeth at night. I was irritable. It just, it didn't jive with what my body and brain really wanted. And I still enjoyed doing those things, but to do them full time, it just, it wasn't the right thing for me to do to optimize my health. And I've always loved cooking. I find it the most relaxing thing in the world. Um, other people find it really stressful, but I just get in this amazing sort of just like Zen mode where I get to experiment and be creative and chopping. And it's one of those like those flow states that people talk about where you just start doing it and all of a sudden time just disappears and you'll be cooking for hours and don't even realize it. I get the same thing with black garlic. And truth be told, I always default to saying we with the company. No, it is I. Like, I am the only one. I do everything. <laughs> I design the labels. I do all the marketing. I do the social media. I make the black garlic. I package the black garlic. Um, I've had zero luck trying to hire people. Sometimes I get my, my daughters to help me or my husband will do some of the heavy lifting, literally and figuratively. But <laughs> it's all still me at this point. And I just get out there and I just start filling jars full of garlic. And, you know, maybe I'll listen to some music. Maybe I'll listen to some podcasts, but I just, oh, it's just so nice to not be as stressed as I used to be. So it was just kind of finding my Zen, finding my happiness, finding what worked with my cave woman brain of just like, oh, I feed family with black garlic. And the turning point actually was when I decided I wanted to make this a thing is like a full business is I had been selling it to this small local market. They were my only customers for almost a year. Cause I'm like, eh, you know, it's fine, whatever. A couple hundred extra dollars a month. And the cashier told me, she's like, man, we have this family come in every week and buy a jar of your cloves and a jar of the black garlic salt. They just use it so fast. And I'm like, really? Like, what are they doing with it? And she told me that the lady said it was the only way she could get her kids to eat her vegetable, their vegetables. <laughs> and I felt the same way, but I thought my kids were just little weirdos. Like my two daughters will, they call it their black garlic candy and they will eat entire heads of it. Sometimes they're like, they will eat so much black garlic that it'll, they'll, it'll like come out of their pores and they're like little <laughs> duties will turn black. It's disgusting. Um, yeah. Speaking of that, the other day, just a couple of weeks ago, I was picking up my daughter from school and one of the other little girls like turned to the teacher and she was like, why does Sybil's mom always smell funny? And I'm like, <laughs> oh, great. I'm the stinky mom. Because the garlic, it just, it penetrates your hair, your clothes, your skin. It's, it's, it's fun. But that is one of the, one of the downsides for sure. Yeah. Like I said, I, I think we said, I told you this offline. I, I attempted to make black garlic. Well, I did. I actually made my own black garlic a couple times. And the first time I tried it, I decided I was going to make it using my sous vide containers because, you know, I, I like to play around with sous vide and I didn't have a rice cooker. And I said, you know, let me try it this way because I can get to the correct temperature. I can do it for the longest time. And maybe it won't smell as bad because it's in a water bath, but unfortunately it, it really, it permeates everything. It comes through the plastic bag, comes through the water and it smells everything up. So it's I can understand that. It's yeah. absolutely out of control. The smell is just so distinctive. It's oh, just, yeah. there is nothing, there is nothing like the smell and taste of black garlic. And it's hard. It's almost when people eat it, I feel like it's almost like wine tasting 
where everybody gets something else. Some people are like, oh, it's like balsamic vinaigrette. Oh, it's like fish sauce or like, oh, it's like barbecue potato chips. Right. It's like everybody gets something a little, a little different because it is just like such a flavor and smell explosion. Right. And um, like I said, you know, if you're trying to make it yourself, you just got to be aware. I've had people that I've talked to that go, I'm going to try to make this in my kitchen. And like, you don't want to do that because it, it will stink up your entire house. You will regret it. it. Yeah. yeah. And it's a long time. It does it's take a long, long time. time. To, yeah. It takes and I a long time to make it. I also told you that, yeah, we, we basically age it, which is important to note. It's like a lot of people think that black garlic is a particular garlic variety where really it's, it's aged garlic and I age it for a full 60 days. So it's, it's completely black and soft. It's spreadable. It's no, it's no longer pungent. It doesn't give you garlic breath. So, but yeah, it is, it is a, it is a journey to get it where it needs to be. Yeah, We're going to get into that a little bit too, but I want to talk about since you are, you know, you do have all these doctorates and you have all this scientific background. How, how did that affect you actually understanding how to make black garlic or to, you know, to perfect the process and, and actually start working with it? Did it, did it help you? Did it hinder you? Did it? Oh no, super helpful. I mean, I, I treated it like the scientific method basically where I had my little notebook and I had thermal couples and I had different bags with different temperatures and humidity just to get it exactly where I wanted it. I mean, it took, like I said before, an entire year of figuring out the perfect temperature, the perfect humidity, the perfect conditions, the garlic variety, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I did, I will have to say like it, like any good scientist, the first thing that we do is go into the scientific literature. And there's a pretty large body of data coming out of South Korea and Japan and China on black garlic processing. And so I used that as kind of a springboard, but ended up kind of developing my own sort of unique methodology, I would say. There's also a lot of research on like the health benefits now. And that's, that's really, that's really come a long way as well. Yeah, we're going to talk about that too, because I know that it's, it's uh, considered a superfood. So, Absolutely. so with all that background you had in the scientific method and microbiology to some extent, you know, now we're talking about, okay, you discovered black garlic, you, you're very intrigued by it. It's turned into your passion now, which makes your job a lot more fun than, you know, <laughs> being a, being a professor, I'm sure it's like me, I've been in banking for th over 30 years, but my passion's always been cooking and food and, you know, creating different things, using different methods, using different ingredients. Yeah. Um, love, you know, my favorite channels are the food channel and, and watching all these shows on Netflix where they go to different countries and learn how to cook those entrees and, and using all these different things. So, mm -hmm. but so let's talk about, I want to dive into black garlic because there's a lot of people out there, like I said, that still don't understand or know what black garlic is. They think it might be just a variety of garlic or they don't know how it's made or how it's processed. So let's get into it. So what, what is black garlic? And let's talk about the process of making it. Yep. So you can think of black garlic as it's an aging process and it's also a fermentative process. It's like fermentation. So there was like a raging debate for years on whether black garlic was considered a fermented food or whether it was considered just a chemical reaction. And the latest research basically shows that it's both. But 95% um, of what's happening though is a chemical reaction and you may be familiar with it. It's called the Maillard reaction. And it's basically what makes a lot of food taste delicious. So it's what makes like the brown, it's browning basically, like browning meat, like when meat goes black, that's like the browning reaction. And it's basically like oxidizing these sugars. And it, that's what makes it, you know, have like more of a sweeter flavor. Um, you also get the Maillard reaction, I believe, with coffee, like the roasting of coffee. So, but anytime you take a food and it goes from light to dark, there's a decent chance that that's the Maillard reaction. Yeah, even with uh, using sous vide at lower temperatures, you can get a Maillard reaction. Oh, really? Except, yeah, you can take like, onions as a good example. You can take chopped onions, put them in a plastic bag in a sous vide bath and put them at like 145 degrees for six hours and they will eventually 
start to break down. Yeah. Yeah. They'll start to break down and they'll get brown and they'll get the Maillard reaction. So that's pretty much what you're doing with black garlic is you're giving it that Maillard reaction, but at a lower temperature and you got a little bit of fermentation in there as well. So, all right, go ahead. I'll keep, keep on rolling. Yeah. And so there is, they've, there was basically a study that came out last year from China where they pasteurized the garlic. Um, so they destroyed all of the native microbes and the flavor different, the flavor profile was slightly different. So there are microbes on there that are what we call in the microbiology world, thermophilic, meaning heat loving. So they're able to metabolize and live and reproduce at higher temperatures. And those are responsible for the last sort of like 5% of the flavor profile. So um, nobody was right or nobody was wrong, really. It was both all along. So it is technically a fermented food with these native thermophilic microbes that you could find on the garlic naturally but most of it is the is the Maillard reaction in super slow motion now can you use pretty much any um, species of garlic to do this with or does it have to be certain types of garlic or no no I've tried it with probably about Mm -hmm. seven different garlic varieties and I'll be honest um, it all turned out pretty much the same Um, You kind of lose with like heirloom garlic or other varieties of garlic. There is some like variation in the flavor, in the texture, and all of those are sort of lost by the end of the black garlic process because those mm, Maillard reaction chemicals are just so much stronger than anything you would have these like subtle differences in garlic varieties. So, and then if you start off with different colors, like there's more purple garlic and then there's white garlic, it all just ends up pitch, pitch black at the end. So, yeah. yep. so any kind of flavor profiles are different at all with any kind of, any kind of different varieties of garlic? Like you said, you know, you said, you know, you took over a year to kind of figure out your process, yeah. and but it doesn't really matter which kind I, you get. Or... As far as I can tell, I've tested yeah. about seven, although I've, if you ask my husband, he says that I have like a garbage palate, surprisingly. Like I'll, I love like, cr- I love crap food. I love like Michelin star food, but then I also can eat just like extremely disgusting things that or really plain food too. So maybe I need to get him to, to really test it or someone who's like, a, so my daughter the- is obsessed with learning how to cook right now. I'm actually yeah. really proud of her. Yesterday was the first time that she cooked chicken by herself, like fried chicken, basically. And she collects herbs from the herbs garden. And um, she is trying to build up her tolerance for spicy food. Yeah, It's amazing. I am like, oh, I'm like, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, you finished kindergarten. No, no, no. I care about the fact that you are learning functional skills, like eating spicy tacos and cooking chicken. So what about the quality of the product when, it, when you're starting out? I know that you can buy, there's a lot of black garlic products on Amazon. A lot of them are made in China. They're mass produced. Um, what's the difference between something like that than something that you produce here locally in, in the United States and your process? So I haven't had Chinese garlic in a really, really long time. Like a couple, at least, mm, I say a couple of years, closer to like four or five years since I had it the last time. But I remember from when I did have it, it was very, very dry, very dry, which makes sense because it's getting transported across the Pacific Ocean. And some people like dry black garlic. Um, I don't find it as versatile or as flavorful. Like when you're losing all of that moisture, you're also losing a lot of the more fragile aromatic compounds. Um, So you're just really lacking in flavor. And I would say there's also like quality concerns where I've had it, when I had it before there were, um, I actually don't know what to call this. Like the hus, I call it the hus, like the garlic the skin yeah the skin yeah there was there was skin in it that's a better word um yeah i mean and the garlic the garlic that comes out of california is just it's so happy to be there it is the perfect climate to grow garlic it's fresh it's flavorful i get it basically just like a week after it's been picked 
you know, it's pretty amazing the system that we have in place and like the infrastructure to get it out to Texas as quickly as we do. Because the more flavor you have starting off, the more it's going to convert to those like yummy Maillard reaction flavors. That's awesome. So let's get in a little bit. I don't want you to give away any uh, secrets, but how you said it took you over a year to perfect your process. How did you start out making this on your own? I know, like I said, I did mine. I started out just using the sous vide, but did you start out using a rice cooker, you know, kind of when you were just playing around with it and then kind of move yeah. to other fun, other ways or. I tried, let's see. Oh man. I tried sous vide it just, um, in like an ice chest, like a big ice chest. Um, I didn't like the texture that came out that way. I felt like it ended up like almost too mushy and hard to peel. I tried the rice cooker. I tried a pressure cooker. That was interesting. So the pressure cooker actually, it was faster and it turned black, but then it was bitter. So I think it went basically into the burning side of the, like too far into right. the reaction. Um, and then basically I did the lab equipment with like an incubator with like controlled humidity. So basically setting it up kind of like um, almost like a greenhouse and that worked really well. And now I actually, I'm really lucky. My husband is a process engineer. And so we have heavily modified a warming oven, multiple giant warming ovens to basically be black garlic machines, black garlic producing machines. I was going to say, because making, you know, enough for you to, you know, eat and play around with and maybe sell a couple bottles locally to going into the commercial side where you're providing product for, yeah, you know, uh, people to make rubs and stuff with. And uh, it's a lot different than, you know, just making a little bit here and there. So yeah. what was and the I'm process? Sure a lot of your Oh, sorry, what go was, ahead. What, what was the process for you ramping that up and, and to where you're at now? Oh, man. I mean, what I mean, the biggest thing was finding like a food manufacturing facility that I could use where I wasn't going to make enemies. Um, I've already been told that I'm a toxic workplace or a toxic coworker <laughs> because I, I am notorious for microwaving fish. Uh, and Brussels sprouts and other, um, you know, unpleasant things. And so basically being in an industrial area where nobody is going to complain about the black garlic smell, because you can smell it from almost a half a block away yeah, even with our circulation system going. So that was the biggest challenge. And then just finding the right equipment The black garlic is so it, it's, I don't know how to describe it. I mean, you gotta, you gotta just buy some and try it, but I sent it, I tried to send it to probably like three or four different co-packers and they're like, no, we're not touching it. The cloves are just like so sticky and soft and the black just like gets everywhere. So I had to develop unique systems for filling the jars, you know, and then just like labeling it. I still like label it by hand basically and grinding it, grinding it to a powder has been a real challenge because if you use other types of grinders, it will overturn it and you'll end up with black garlic butter, like peanut butter, but garlic, which is not desirable. It is not <laughs> as fun as it's not. Nobody really wants that. There's no market for it. Um, so yeah, just finding the right equipment because there's only, I think there's only two, two or three other people in the country that are making black garlic at scale. Um, so it's, it's not like you can just, we can't like, we're not on like a discord together or anything like that. It's all, we all have our trade secrets. And so, yeah, no unique, no real unique equipment for black garlic grinding or packaging or anything like that, unfortunately. Yeah. I personally, um, I, when I made my black garlic, I decided, you know, when it was done, like you said, you get a soft, mushy kind of buttery type, you know, product. So it's, yeah. it's something you can spread on bread and eat it just like that. And it's yep. delicious, but like, you know, a lot of people, I think, Hey, I want to use this in some seasonings and rubs that I want to try out. So you have to dry it unless you buy it already dried, but you can't make it dried. So I pretty much had to take the black garlic that I made and put it in a dehydrator. And again, then you get the same thing at the smell and the stuff. But it does, and it does, it takes a long time 
for it to dehydrate as well enough to where you can actually grind it into a powder yeah. where it's not all sticky and mushy. <laughs> so, yeah. um, but, and you do, you do lose some of the, um, like you said, some of the flavors when you do powder it, but that's like anything, even with regular garlic, you know, it's always, if you use garlic powder over fresh garlic, it's a different, different taste. It's the oh, same so way. Different. Yep. But it still has, you can still tell it's black garlic when it's powdered. It still has a different, totally different taste, totally different mouthfeel. I mean, it's really, it's hard to explain to somebody because they just think when they hear garlic, it's, oh, it's just like garlic, but different color. Well, mm -hmm. no, it, this, it's more mellow. It's more nutty. It's just, it's a totally different flavor. So uh, yeah, it is difficult to make though too that's why a lot of these co-packers like you said don't even want to use it as a it. as a product because they'll buy it and you know like i said i had one co-packer tell me yeah i can get it but i'm going to charge you you know a premium for it because i don't have anybody else that wants to use it and it costs a lot to get in here so it's going to be you know something that's probably not going to you know be very beneficial to you price wise <laughs> so Yep. And I don't, I don't add any, um, filler or desiccant to the black garlic that I make. I just want it to be like straight black garlic. So if it's not kept sealed, it will start to clump just like right. regular, like powdered garlic. And a lot of people yeah. don't want to deal with that basically, but it a, is a lot of seasonings. Well, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I think we're just conditioned to think of things as kind of like lasting forever. And it's like, well, no, that kind of comes with a price where you're putting, you know, preservatives and anti-caking agents, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but yeah, black garlic is, it is a labor of love. It's a labor Definitely. of love. But like I said, if people haven't tried black garlic on something, I would highly suggest you buy some, yeah. especially from, I'm going to go ahead and pull up your website here. I'm going to share my screen so and we can- it's so funny too. And, you know, people ask me like, what do you use it on? Like, is there a particular type of cuisine? And I was like, no, any cuisine, because any cuisine that uses garlic can utilize black garlic. People associate yeah. it with, um, you know, Southeast Asian cooking, but I, man, I mean, I can make a killer pasta sauce with black garlic. I'll be honest, is the color appetizing? No, it is not. Because when you <laughs> add red, and black together, you end up with kind of a warm gray. It's, it's not cute. It's not cute. It doesn't always photograph well, it's tricky. But I also just really basic cooking, like even if you cook eggs, if you put a little bit of black garlic salt on there, it just makes it special. If you're yeah. trying to impress somebody, it's just, it takes really basic things. Like last night, I just microwaved some Brussels sprouts. Like, Again, I'm disgusting. I will eat like gross thing and like microwave Brussels sprouts and contaminate the whole house. And I put some like grass fed butter and a little bit of black garlic salt on there. It was delicious. It was so good because it's that umami flavor that just, you know, yeah. brr, you know, amazing. It definitely. Like I said, it's, it's got that nutty. I use it. I make a black garlic and coffee rub and that's what I'm, I'm starting to, oh. but I'm going to start marketing that. And that's what I'm going to be Good using coffee. the black garlic I buy from you from, but so this is your website. So people can find it at the black garlic co co black garlic co.com. And it kind of has everything you need to know about black garlic in there and about uh, the company. So um, if you want to, you know, purchase some, you can buy it directly from from her website but you can also find it on the fire and water cooking uh, uh website as well under my store i'm going to start marketing this as well because literally i've tried five or six different brands of black garlic um and your your black garlic is probably one of the darkest ones and the reason i like the darker is because i feel it, it has a, a more mellow more uh punch to it but it also i like that coloring because with my black garlic and coffee rub, I'm going for a darker color finish on like the steaks because yeah. one of the most popular uh, rubs out there, barbecue rubs is called um, hardcore carnivore black, which they use charcoal. Charcoal, yep. Act activated charcoal, which has no flavor to it whatsoever. That actually adds no flavoring to the rub. It just gives it that dark color. Yeah. So that rub is pretty much salt, pepper, onion, and garlic with you know, the, the, with the charcoal in it to give it the dark color. So people just think because it's black and it makes everything 
you know, punch with that black, you know, when you cut into a medium rare steak and you got a really black crust, it just, you know, it makes it more appealing with your eyes, but the, the activated charcoal doesn't add any flavor to it at all. It doesn't have any flavor. So it mm. just gives you that dark color. But I found using the black garlic and the coffee, they complement each other because in, in, you add pepper in there and they all kind of work together with the salt and the onions and the garlic and the, I mean, the black garlic and, and they, they give you that dark color, but they also give you this umami punch that you don't yeah. get with anything else so so you sell the cloves you sell the black garlic powder and you sell black garlic salt so the cloves let's talk about the cloves real quick because i i can honestly say i don't use the cloves as often as i do the powder because like i said i use it with rubs and everything else but what can you do with the cloves that people may not understand or know about yeah so that's where i my first kind of introduction to black garlic was just smearing it on a hamburger. Um, I actually have a cheeseburger tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> like that's my, my true foodie tattoo. Um, but that, I would say that's probably my um, kind of prison death row meal would be like a black garlic bacon and cheeseburger. It's just, it's just a really amazing flavor combination. I also will add it to salad dressings on the rare times that I eat a salad. Um, I don't like cold food, it bums me out. Um, we also do a really good uh, black garlic mac and cheese where you just throw a couple cloves in there. Again, color is not pretty. <laughs> um, I put the cloves in my chili. And then honestly, the biggest thing is uh, just eating it straight. I eat it straight because I, still enjoy the flavor somehow. I always thought that I would be like, you know, one of those kids in high school that goes at an ice cream shop for the summer and then can never eat ice cream again. Well, yeah, I'm going on, you know, five years of making this stuff and I, I still want to eat it every day. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but then a lot of people will take one or two cloves a day for the health benefits. So basically as a supplement more than anything, because as you like alluded to earlier, it is a superfood. Well, let's talk about that since you brought that up, because I think a lot of people don't understand that as well. How does making black garlic, you know, so you're taking garlic and you're, you're turning it into something else. It's the same garlic that you would have naturally. W what makes it more uh, better for your health than regular garlic? What, 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 what is the process that turns it into more of a superfood than regular garlic does? Yeah, it's, a, it's really interesting that there's this compound in garlic called alanine. It's a sulfur containing molecule that has been researched extensively in white garlic for you know, at least 50 years. And there are many, many traditional cultures who have recognized the benefits of garlic. It's always kind of been a panacea in both the Western and the Eastern world. So this compound um, alanine or wait a minute, did I say that right? Allicin, why am I saying that? Allicin, the sulfur containing compound is seven times higher in black garlic. So there is something about the black garlic process that we don't fully understand that increases the amount of this compound, which has been found to be a powerful antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and also even having anti-cancer properties. So we don't have any, most of the data that we have is like in rodent models. There is a little bit of human models coming or human studies coming out. But what we know from rodent models is basically that when you, they consume black garlic on the regular, their cardiovascular health improves. And there is like, a, there is a little bit of data on that in human subjects where they basically had humans um, eating black garlic cloves for a month. And then they looked at things like their triglycerides and their different, like their lipid profile. And the end of that 30 days, it was significantly improved. So the biggest thing is heart health. It also has benefits for, like I said before, it's anti-tumorigenic. It basically, it helps prevent cancer. And then also it is supposed to help with what's known as insulin resistance. So that's like the metabolic syndrome. So basically just making your metabolism um, more efficient and less harmful to your body. And um, I'm a little bit of a health nut and have always sort of, you know, just like the whole cliche that anything that's good for you doesn't taste good. Like one of the supplements I take is 
fermented chocolate flavored cod liver oil. <laughs> it's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting, but it's super good for me. So it just makes my heart happy and my stomach and my tongue happy when I can eat black garlic. And I know that it's so good for me and it actually tastes good. So it's, it's, it's amazing that in that sense. So in, in pretty much you can use like the cloves and like a compound butter, stuff like that. And like you said, yeah. it, it might not look as pretty as you know, using white garlic, but the flavor is just totally different. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people when you try black garlic, try, try some regular garlic, you know, maybe make a garlic bread or like I said, make a, a gar compound butter, regular garlic, and then one with black garlic and just taste the difference. And you'll understand that it, it's totally different. It's a totally it different flavor profile. It's, um, and it's, it just really will blow you away. And that's what I said. I love making it, you know, using it in my rubs because it's totally different. It's especially when, you know, there's so many pre-made rubs out there that you all use the same ingredients. I mean, it just surprises me every day. If you can go to a, uh, any kind of like a barbecue store that specializes in just barbecue. I, I know one's called Atlantic grill company up in Atlanta that, you know, they have five, you know, aisles of seasonings you know barbecue seasonings of all different manufacturers and you know all the different big barbecue people have their own rubs and stuff but it surprised me how many have salt pepper and garlic you know yeah. the, the the basic you know all-purpose seasoning they all have their own and it's like it's just salt pepper and garlic you know you're just putting your amounts in so it's really not anything different mm -mm. and no. you know it, it, I could take, you know, this guy's salt, pepper, and garlic, and this guy's, and it'll taste the same. There's really nothing that differentiates it. Yeah. But you put that twist of using black garlic instead, and you got a totally different flavor profile. So, yeah. um, and that's the reason why I'm starting to create my own rubs using that. I want to expose people more to black garlic and yeah. and the difference that it can make in, uh, in a totally different uh, flavor profiles out there. Yeah, I, I truly believe that it has the potential to kind of be like the new ketchup or what have you, to be like a pantry staple for, for people. Because I just know so many people that start using it on a regular basis and just, you know, they get hooked and then they just, you know, they find more ways to incorporate it. And it be, I think it could be that like fourth kind of magic ingredient of like salt, pepper, garlic, black garlic. And that's kind of the, could be like the staple of really good, good, great cooking. And I know a lot of people get sort of scared of the price, but one is like, like I said before, is like, it's such a labor of love. And then two, it's really, it's, it ends up being like pound for pound, a similar price to something like cinnamon, which people don't right. think of as being super expensive. And then third, a little bit goes a long way. A right. long way and so you know you can have like an entire jar of black garlic salt for like three months and be using a little bit you know every day basically so. yeah and i think you know with more and more people like you starting up you know cottage businesses you know yeah. producing it i mean that's the problem i think you know the you know commercialization of it is not really out there yet because they don't see a benefit to it um because it's just not that familiar people aren't that familiar with it so but leaves room for people like you to start your own company and get it going and i think it's going to jump start uh the the people realizing what it is out there so let's talk a little bit about since you've been doing this since now you're doing more commercial what's the weirdest thing you've seen people use black garlic for or or is there anything out there that's not kind of the standard or oh yeah i black garlic desserts man it's yeah. it sounds nasty but they're so good every once in a while i will have a neighbor or a friend you know i don't know what they're thinking but they're like i made a black garlic cheesecake and even i'm like i am <laughs> I don't I've know. Heard, I've heard black garlic ice cream is supposed I, to be like I, one of the best things. And I've I never tried made, it. I made black garlic bacon ice cream. It was really good. It was really good. You kind of had to one, get past the color. And then you had to sort of, I mean, cause it's like, it's kind of like a savory ice cream. It was like sweet and umami and like a little salty. Cause I added some salt in there to like balance it out. But it was really good. It was really good. There was none left at the end of the day at my household. Um, yeah, black garlic chocolate cake, you add like a few of the cloves is surprisingly good. 
it just it's it's adds that like extra richness to it um like the bitterness from the chocolate it just it's really well balanced i don't like super sweet desserts so the black garlic is kind of a good fit for me but i'm sure if you're the type of person that likes you know like cotton candy ice cream then mm, this might not be for you or if you just have a really narrow palate um i've also what did we do we did chocolate dipped black garlic cloves that was pretty good and it was a really really fun texture um let's see what else have i seen that was really really weird man yeah i think black garlic cheesecake might take the cake <laughs> Literally, 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 literally yeah. and figuratively, yeah. Maybe a little yeah. black garlic whipped cream on top, you know? <laughs> hey, you know what? I have not tried that, but I don't see why not. You know? There you go. See, we got ideas. We're just flowing, throwing things right. out there. Yep. So um, you, you've kind of grown, you said, over the last couple of years, and now you're you're doing a lot more commercial uh supplying so what what can you produce right now like within a within a week because i know you said you do 60 days right on your on your garlic production so that's what makes it a lot more dark than some of the others out there some of the others rush the process and going back to like i said you know when you turn it into a powder it's not really as black as it is when it's the cloves because a lot of the inside it's, it's more brown but the darker the brown for me, the better, because I think it just is more flavorful. So being that it takes 60 days for you to produce, you know, a, uh, a load of your black garlic, how much are you producing right now? Uh, about a hundred pounds a week on average. And if I have a really large order, um, for either, you know, like private labeling or for someone like you, who's putting it in a in a mix, I can go up to basically like 500 pounds of garlic a week. Any plans on expanding that even further? Or? I would love to, you know, I mean, I'm sure you've heard this from like millions of, you know, like dozens of people, I should say, not millions, that's silly. Um, the supply, supply chain issues. Yeah. It's rough. Well, I'm sure you yeah, have with COVID and everything else. I mean, how did, how did COVID affect your business uh, when you it's were... Because you were still trying to get ramped up, I'm sure, during that time, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was great for business. There were more people cooking from home. Um, and so my, you know, selling directly consumers was really great. But then soon after, it became difficult to find, like, I couldn't find my caps for a while. I couldn't find my jars for a while. And then most recently, I, I just couldn't find garlic. And garlic is even more, just growing the garlic itself is more of a labor of love. It's a nine month process to grow garlic and so if 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 they're out they're out um and i'm i'm a stickler i refuse to get garlic that is not from the united states i source everything from the usa basically the glass jars the labels the lids etc cetera, etc cetera. um even the gloves that i wear I'm, I'm kind of silly about that but i'm like the gloves are made in the usa even <laughs> so um yeah that's been the number one limiting factor is, and at this point I've reached a scale that I am working directly with the farmers and they are planting crops for me in anticipation of the business growing. Well, that's, that's awesome. Me. That's I want to go good. visit my plot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, ah, my, my little babies grow. You'll become even more delicious than you already are. There you go. Take a picture of a sign. This is my black garlic. Yeah, get away. <laughs> Other <laughs> garlic use vampire hunters. <laughs> well, that's great news. And um, I'm really glad I, uh, I found you because, you know, I, I've been wanting to have a discussion about black garlic and you're the perfect person to have that discussion with this with your background and everything and, and what you're doing here. I really uh, look forward to working with you with my rubs and stuff. And definitely I'm waiting for my order to come. Hopefully it'll come in the next day or so. Absolutely. <laughs> so, yep. so, and uh, definitely uh, going to point people in your direction. I'm going to, I'll be selling your black garlic stuff on my uh, website as well. So uh, really anything else you want to talk about uh, the black garlic uh, you know business right now I mean is it it's looking up it has to be looking up so yeah um if people want to nerd out with me even more than we already did today they can find me on Instagram it's a uh, the black garlic co on Instagram um, I do semi-regular um, videos on the science of black garlic and other superfoods so just like breaking down some of the literature in more details um but yep 
pretty, pretty nerdy, pretty nerdy. <laughs> got that like overlap of like science nerd and like food nerd. And I'm like right there in like the Venn diagram. So yeah. And that's where I'm at too. That's why I like, I, I gravitate towards people that are like that. Chris Young, like I said, he's one of the founders of Chef Steps. He's worked for, um, you know, some very famous chefs and he's like that too. He started out as an engineer and yep. got, he gets into the science of cooking and I'm an Alton Brown fan, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> where he yeah, breaks everything yeah. down, you know, yeah. uh, Ken Kenji Lopez Alt in the food lab. Like I said, th those are the type of people that I, you know, I want to know why something works well or why something, why that cooking method is better. And that's what attracted me to sous vide. People just think, Oh, you can just make a great steak with it. They really don't understand what low temperature cooking over time can do, you know, yeah. being able to control a temperature. And, you know, that's one of the things like with precise lower temperature cooking is what produces black garlic. Absolutely. So, yeah. I mean, there's so many different things that can be used for and the benefits of it are just, uh, so, you know, just astounding. And, and that's, I'm always going down the rabbit holes like that. So it's always great to talk to people, you know, that have the same kind of interests as me. So I really want to thank you for being on. And uh, we definitely look forward to, uh, to uh, doing some business with you and having you on again sometime when we got some other stuff to talk about. That sounds great. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Well, thanks again. And I appreciate it. Make sure you check out the black and check out the fire and water cooking uh, website and the shop and you can buy the black garlic companies uh black garlic from there as well but thanks again elizabeth dr elizabeth latham everybody check her out and uh i'll see you again on the next fire and water cooking video and podcast thanks again for joining us on the fire and water cooking podcast make sure you check out the black check out everything black garlic you can also find their products on the fire and water cooking.com website under our store plus all our other products. Thanks for uh, listening and watching, and I'll see you again on the next Fire and Water Cooking podcast.